How's it going everyone? It's Harvey from Weather Sponge 5000 and in this video of course we're closely monitoring several tropical disturbances in the northern Atlantic. One in which is currently impacting land which is now tropical storm Idalia which made landfall as category 3 storm right up along the big bend area of Florida bringing a high amount of storm surge flooding as well as very gusty winds and now it's bringing heavy rainfall over the Carolinas and we do see it's suddenly a lot less organized and what um, ha than um, what it was when it made landfall. We do see that the wind shear is a lot stronger and we don't really see as much convective activity of course since the eye has moved over land and lost contact with the very warm Gulf of Mexico water and we're going to continue to see this weekend and you could probably see the dry air that's something going to um, help weaken this storm even as it moves out to sea which is certainly good news. We also have Hurricane Franklin which is moving just to the north of Bermuda at this time we ha now have Invest 94L as well, which likely will develop into a tropical storm. We are seeing a decent amount of convective activity, and it's only expected to increase just by a little bit to where this will be likely be considered a low end to a mid um, a mid level tropical storm. But the good news is that current consensus from the computer models want to take this further northward, and we have another tropical disturbance just to the east of Invest 94L that could potentially not only develop into to a tropical storm but potentially a major hurricane where we have the latest run of the european model wanting to bring a major hurricane uncomfortably close to the caribbean so we're definitely going to need to pay close attention to the main development region over the next several days Take a look at the global tropics hazards outlook. It does has, have me concerned because if we were to take a look at the um, possibility of a tropical cyclone um, for the week ending September 12th, we do see a pretty large area of the main development region is outlined as having a, a good possibility of a tropical storm developing. And if we were to move on to week three, which is a week ending September 19th, um, the chance increases even more, which is definitely more concerning that even this far in the long term future, the Climate Prediction Center is outlining an area where we definitely could see a tropical storm and could um, come uncomfortably close to the Caribbean islands. So we're definitely going to need to pay close attention to the main development region and we could easily see the possibility the next future tropical cyclone in the main development region move into the United States as well. So first, I want to talk about the possibility of a major hurricane impacting the Caribbean. So if we were to continue to move forward, we do see Invest 94L likely will develop into a tropical storm. There's a decent amount of convective activity, but it's going to move too far up north, um, which is certainly good news. And um, the more northward it moves, more dry air it'll have to deal with, which means that it'll likely just dissipate once this heads further northward. But moving forward to our next tropical wave that could become our next major storm in the Atlantic. So we do see the European Mall expects a decent amount of convective activity to move in right around the Friday to Saturday time frame just off the West African coast. And we do see a, a, a thing that's very concerning is that the convective activity is very consolidated. It isn't elongated, which means that the more consolidated and compact an area of convective activity is, the more likely we're going to see intensification because the more compact it is, that means that there's less um, other areas of convective activity that are competing for the same amount of air molecules to converge because um, let's say if the, convect the area of convective activity was too elongated and you'd have multiple um, clusters of thunder showers trying to compete for the same limited amount of energy or air molecules to converge and that means that there won't be that one area where all the energy will converge all the air molecules will converge for the storm system to have a high possibility of intensifying rapidly but when we see something small like this we're more likely to see this intensify much more rapidly and that's exactly what the european model is expecting there's quite a bit of moisture surrounding it and not a lot of dry air there might it might have to deal with dry air just a little bit but it isn't enough to really stop this storm from beco easily becoming major hurricane status we see the european model why not drop the pressure down to 960 millibars and this is probably less than 200 miles away from the lesser antilles in this run and e and we could easily see shifts in the forecast where the the european model won't want to take this 
prefer southward um, if the ridging ends up being a little bit stronger than anticipated just a north bit. But we need to do just um wait and see but yeah this is very concerning of course it's 240 hours mark um out so it's far from certain that this is going to occur but even in a more manageable forecast time frame at the very least within the next six days we do see a tropical storm in the main development region and within the next seven days it becomes a uh, even stronger tropical storm so it, it's at least pointing towards the possibility of a trend of an intensifying storm towards the Caribbean, which is the reason why the European model is forecasting this to become a hurricane. And I definitely would give this a good chance of potentially developing into a hurricane, especially since the European model has been quite reliable on um, this hurricane season, especially. We're definitely going to need to pay close attention to the amount of dry air because there will be a decent amount of dry There's expected to be a decent amount of dry air right over the, wet, the Eastern Caribbean, and that could potentially inhibit it if it it's concentrated enough the European model doesn't expect it to be enough but we could easily see changes with that forecast another reason why the European model wants to rapidly intensify this storm system is because the wind shear won't be very strong over this storm and only help the outflow of this storm we do see the center of circulation will be shielded by an upper level high that's just um, above the center of circulation and that will allow a nice outflow for this storm we do see the wind shear is moderate just outside of the center of circulation but it necessarily isn't um isn't um associated with another upper level low that would inhibit tropical cyclone development it's more associated with an um, uh, upper level high that would encourage outflow and encourage storm intensifications which means that it's likely won't experience a strong amount of wind shear as this continues ahead further um westward based on what the european model is stating which is certainly concerning however the gfs model is showing a different scenario which i'll show you right now so unlike the European model, the GFS model does not expect this tropical wave to necessarily develop anything more than potentially a low-end tropical storm or even uh, or even a storm status that's even below that. So, um, But you're probably seeing the, the wind shear map over this storm and you're probably thinking, oh hey, the wind shear looks very light. This should be encouraging for tropical cyclone development. However, there's something that the map is showing that isn't necessarily represented uh, res representative of the amount of wind shear the storm is actually dealing with because if we were to look at the soundings a wind direction between different levels of the atmosphere we see the wind direction changes quite a bit with height um, right around the lower levels we see that the, wi the winds are primarily coming from a southern direction but in the upper levels the winds are moving primarily from an easterly direction and when we see change in wind direction with height that means that there's a stronger amount of wind shear because um, because for a tropical cyclone to have a good chance of developing, the wind directions need to be at around the same, um, right around like the same direction. Um, so the heat, um, so the heat engine associated with the center of circulation and the convective activity could enhance. Because if we have the lower level winds moving one direction and the upper level winds moving another, that means that the air molecules aren't necessarily, um, they aren't necessarily um, consolidated or converging enough to a point where the heat engine will be maximized. So we see a much weaker storm and the, su the southerly surface level winds will force the storm further northward, which will inhibit tropical cyclone development because not only will the wind shear enhance, but the sea surf temperatures will definitely cool down the further northward it moves. And the so we're definitely a big thing we're going to need to keep an eye on in terms of if this will have a good chance of developing or not is the steering flows because if we were to see the steering flow um, be a little bit stronger towards the east where the lower level winds and the upper level winds are moving the same direction in the GFS model then that would definitely encourage tropical cyclone development because we don't have different areas of the storm um, bringing the energy towards um, away from the center of circulation rather they're all going at the same pace um, they're all at 
pretty much the same um they're moving the same direction which would definitely encourage tropical cyclone development comparing the sounding of the gfs model to european model you're gonna see a clear difference if we were to take a look at the low um the difference between the lower and upper level winds we do see the lower level winds um let me show you guys another um another time frame with this storm so if we were to compare the two between the lower levels and the upper level winds where we see that they move all move in the same direction in the european models case so that would definitely encourage much more tropical cyclone development with this storm and intensification so we're definitely going to need to pay close attention to steering flows right now the european model of course expects a lot more ridging over um the atlantic which means that um we're more likely to see this um storm um, sh um move southward and the southern and the upper level and lower level winds move at the same direction but um the gfs model of course expects less ridging which means that this storm would move further northward the wind shear would be stronger and we're less likely to see tropical cyclone development so definitely pay close attention to the amount of ridging over the northern atlantic over the next several days but the caribbean definitely needs to keep an eye on this with the um european model wanting to develop this storm now in terms of the other storms um that we're keeping an eye on for the more short-term future we of course have tropical storm idalia which now is moving through south carolina at this point let me show you guys water vapor imagery right now so here's tropical storm idalia right here and we do see that much um this storm is definitely a lot less organized um compared to the point at which it may landfall um but still bringing a heavy amount of rain over the carolinas where you could still easily experience six to ten inches of rain so you need to watch out for that there's of course a possibility of um of tornadoes right over the carolinas as well because when we have a powerful storm like a uh, tropical cyclone there's definitely going to be strong winds between uh, um strong wind shear between the upper levels and lower levels of the atmosphere which definitely would encourage tornado development so watch out uh, for that possibility right around the carolinas as well in terms of the future of tropical storm idalia um after it moves through the carolinas we do see much more dry air is expected to entrain this storm thanks to this low um thanks to this low pressure system bringing a strong northwesterly flow that's bringing a lot of the drier and more stable air further southward which means that this storm will struggle once it moves into the open atlantic but what's interesting is that we do see the storm re-intensify um this is partially due to the fact that it'll do have some barrel clinic influences that'll help strengthen this storm and which uh, and, in, and an interesting trend that i've been noticing from both the computer um computer models is that they want to take a slight left hook before it eventually moves um towards the northeast and the gfs model also shows this and could this potentially become uncomfortably close to the northeast because we do see the gfs model definitely takes a big left hand curve to where it's closer to the northeast i'll still say the most likely scenario is that this won't directly impact the northeast and make a strong left hook because in any um for any tropical cyclone it's extremely rare you need a strong amount of ridging um for that to occur um as well as a strong easterly flow um so this will still most likely move out to sea before the left um before it reaches the northeast but it's at least something to um watch especially since the gfs model does want to strengthen this quite a bit and depending on how strong this ridge is right here if this ridge is somehow able to become stronger there could maybe be that slight possibility it takes that left hook, but I'll still say the most likely scenario is that it'll move out to sea. And this is the National Hurricane Center's forecast when it comes to tropical storm Idalia. It's currently at around 65 miles per hour, and we're going to see this move out to sea. This could bring tropical storm conditions to Bermuda, so watch out for that right around the um, Saturday to Sunday time frame. And um, however, I'll say this will mo most likely move out to sea. This won't strengthen once it moves over the Atlantic thanks to the amount of dry air, which is certainly good news. But I'll keep you guys updated if we see any continuing trends where they want to bring a left hook towards the northeast. Here are what the European ensemble members are stating at this time, and we do have a decent amount of them wanting to develop a hurricane near 
the Caribbean islands or just north of it, which is definitely concerning. And even if this doesn't directly impact the Caribbean, it still could bring potentially long term impacts to the United States if it continues to go this direction. We're just gonna need to wait and see. But with the European model, um, with this many ensemble members wanting to develop a hurricane, it does show that the, the possibility certainly exists. So definitely keep that in mind right over the Caribbean islands um, because um, there is certainly that possibility. So here's my overall forecast when it comes to the next few tropical um, cyclones. So for Hurricane Franklin, this is a clicking move out to sea. Watch out for a high rip current risk from both um, tropical storm Dahlia and Hurricane Franklin over the next several days, right up along the east coast. Expect like six to ten inches of rain right around the Carolinas. And for this potential um, tropical cyclone that's like expected to move in by Friday, the European Mall wants to develop a major hurricane close to the Caribbean. So you definitely need to keep an eye on this. And we're going to need to see if the GFS Mall will be the more correct one or the European Mall. So definitely keep that in mind. But that's it for now, guys. And I thank you guys for watching.